Movement disorders is actually a specialty within neurology itself for patients when they're moving when they don't want to, things like tremor and Parkinson's, or they can't move as well when they want to, right? They can't kind of get up and go as easily or they don't have as good of balance or they have walking problems. Here at our institution, we're a comprehensive center, but we absolutely pride ourselves on having innovation and therapy and neuromodulation, which are things like deep brain stimulation, transmagnetic stimulation, and focused ultrasound therapies to treat tremor and Parkinson's and dystonia and all of the things that fall under that category. Hey, how's it going? The science of it is fascinating, kind of understanding how the brain works, understanding how normal movement happens, and then of course, when people aren't moving normally, they're coming to see us. It's such a physical impact for patients. I don't need to highlight to them the importance of it getting better. They already know because it's impacting their day-to-day -day life. With Mary's essential tremors, she would be shaking so bad the fork would be clicking on the plate. When they turn on the deep brain stimulation, it was one of the coolest things you'll ever see in your life, steady as can be to partner together to really achieve that quality of life and that return to normalcy or as close as possible. That was my greatest reward to be part of that journey of returning their quality of life, even though they have this disease. You don't have to just live with it. We're way too good at treating it. And our goal again is to return that quality of life. Parkinson's disease is actually a very different disease than a central tremor. And although it can cause tremor, the type of tremor that is most common in Parkinson's disease is what we would call a resting tremor. The muscles involved with the tremor most often tremor when they're relaxed and in a resting state. Actually, Parkinson's disease is not defined by tremor, it's defined by slowness of movement. Just this decreased dexterity, this feeling that, hey, I know how I wanna write my name, but it's kind of like my hand doesn't wanna to listen to me. Parkinson's patients can also have this increased muscle tension we call that rigidity. And then last but not least, it can really impact balance itself. Now, both a central tremor and Parkinson's can cause tremor as a symptom. The how we got there, meaning what is going on in the brain to cause that symptom is entirely different in those two diseases. And so often the treatment is very different patients that have tremor, it's not that they have trouble holding their arm up. That's their kind of big part of the brain, kind of the cortex is really in control of that. But then we have a deep part of the brain called the basal ganglia. And I like to think of this part of the brain as the operator system. With a central tremor itself, we think that that operator system, that deep part of the brain has kind of static in it. It has this noisiness in it that it shouldn't be there. And when we think about treatments, we're really getting to the heart of, of quieting that static, whether that's with medication, or brain therapy. Any neurologic disease can really feel stigmatizing to people to the point actually that it's often overwhelming to imagine one, admitting it, and two, then seeking out care. The biggest obstacle that I wanna overcome or keep working to overcome is awareness and in this understanding that you're not alone and that you don't have to just live with it. The technologies and the treatments have gained ground so quickly that it's been hard for everybody to keep pace with it. But the real end of the day, it's about changing that conversation and saying, well, listen, yeah, this tremor might not kill you, but that's not really good enough, right? Let's aim to do better and then we'll meet you where you are so that we can achieve that goal.